I came across a survey from America Hotel and Lodging Association, the AHLA. Big, big group there, Frank. I never heard of that, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> I, was, I was like, just, it's like, oh, I wonder who these people are. <laughs> anyway, because uh, we've been talking about travel, um, travel booking companies. So you got Booking Holdings, Expedia, um, Airbnb, all these kind of companies. Plus, then you have the rental cars and the airlines. And Frank, this shocked me because now I don't have the exact date. This was published just yesterday or the day before. Or no, this is today. So this is this is very recent. But according to the American Hotel and Lodging Association, sixty-seven uh, percent of business travelers are planning to take fewer trips going forward. Now, this deadline—I I don't know exactly what these timelines are. We know that—is um, it CDC or who put out the mandate that you know you're going to have to wear a mask through airports at least through I think January of next year? So so that's already on there. Fifty-two uh, percent of travelers are likely to cancel existing travel plans without rescheduling. And 60% are expected to postpone existing travel plans. Uh, meanwhile, another 66% of respondents are likely to travel to only places they can drive. Why is that important? Because if you see a pullback or a drawdown in airlines, but that might benefit Avis, car budget, or uh, Hertz is now publicly traded again. They came out of the ashes of bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you might want to look at that stock. Uh, but that was really interesting to me. And this other stat, I know I don't want to bore you with figures. I know it's, they're kind of difficult to follow when you're listening. Um, Frank, TSA travel, the uh, security checkpoints and stuff that scan for screeners, is about 80% back to above pre-COVID levels. But they're talking about, and, and why am I breaking down um, this? I'll tell you, because the majority of airlines get their profits from business class and first class, Frank. Mm -hmm. So it's not your coach classes that, you know, the schmucks of the world like me fly. So for all those higher class people, <laughs> um, but they don't expect business travel. So the more expensive seats pre to, uh, to get back to pre pandemic levels until 2024. Now I might've missed this Frank, but I'm, I was surprised by that. 2024 is a long way away to get back to business travel in my opinion, based on where we were going with the vaccine being out there, uh, the number of vaccine shots getting uh, out into distribution and all that. So I kind of wanted your, this. I just saw this today, so this is kind of out of left field. But <laughs> I mean, we'll run long on this segment, but I would tell you from that, we I think we all know that the vaccine doesn't work because people, a lot of people get a Delta variant. And oh, yes, here we go. We're going to get in trouble now. No, but you, you know that you're not getting, I know I'm waiting to get kicked off, right? Everyone says, you get kicked off all these platforms, keep saying that, even though it's the truth. But <laughs> but seriously, people who got it realize you're seeing people who got it are wearing masks like crazy, even in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, when it comes to traveling, even though the airplane is probably the safest, the safest, and this is, you know, you talk to any pilot, you talk to anyone on the inside, I mean, the, the, it gets refiltered and, you know, uh, one of the probably the least places that you would get on the airplane, maybe in, in the terminal is different, but you know, and, and interaction with people, it's different. But you know, when I look at, at the airlines and people traveling less, one thing that changed us is international travel. If you go someplace international and you have to get tested for COVID to come back in, even in the U S and, and a lot of these hotels are set up to do that for you. But if you get COVID, you're going to be quarantined two weeks. Now you got to stay in that country for another two weeks. I mean, you know how expensive that is? You know how, how troubling that is? You know how hard? And you got to be in quarantine. You know, it, it, it's it's scary to be quarantined in another country. I can see another country. In the U.S., there's different states that are you know, taking it much more seriously than others. I don't want to travel to New York, but I am going to be traveling to Baltimore. I'm going to be traveling to Dallas and places like that soon. Uh, I, I see it. I mean, I, I see it. I, you know, when it comes to business travel. However, I think people are going to realize that, you know, if they're healthy, if they're in good shape uh, and they got vaccinated already – uh, you know, there is less, uh, much, much less of a chance of you uh, of getting, you know, deathly ill from this, uh, which I think we have to get used to 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 COVID. I think it's going to be here forever, maybe not forever, maybe maybe a long, a very long time. I think it's just like a version of a flu that's a little bit worse, so we, it's going to be a seasonal thing, uh, and that's just the way it's going to be. Right now, we're talking about booster shots, and then there's leading doctors saying, "Well, you're going to need at least two booster shots." <laughs> so. You know, you're going to see more variants, but the fact that a lot of people took the vaccine saying we're going to be okay, and now they're getting COVID again. Again, they're getting it mildly, which which the vaccine protects against, but that's going to result in, in a little bit less traveling, with, and it makes sense with, with, with cars, right? Because you're driving, and, mm -hmm. and you know, rent the car plays are great on this. I still think eventually this is going to open up. People are going to get used to it. They're all kind of used to it now. You're not seeing like massive fear like there was, you know, nine months ago. Uh, I think airlines on these pullbacks are fantastic. It's one of the sectors that hasn't gone above their pre-COVID levels. It's still 20, 25% off. 
Uh, I like airlines, have a three-year time frame. Maybe they go down 10% from your 15%. I know three years from now, they're going to be a lot, lot higher, probably easy double. And I can't say that for a lot of sectors, even big tech, that you're going to get an easy double in three years from these levels where things are getting a little out of control, a little expensive here. But uh, I see that. I see that. And also, we saw less hiring too, really quick. We'll cover that, right? I, I mean, uh, you know, Jackson Hole's last week and the, the Fed basically said, hey, we're and not doing nothing anything. Nothing burger. <laughs> well, we're doing nothing. We're fine. Everything's good. Uh, you know, everything's cool here, which we kind of said. I mean, very, very, not since, you know, Greenspan was in office that anything major has come out of Jackson Hole in terms of policy. Like, you know, they really don't use Jackson Hole. They're, they're meeting in, in, you know, later this month and we might see a couple things there. But I don't even think he talked about taper that much, which is interesting. But I did see the reports from today. And I want to talk about this before we go. And not to run too late here it is uh, the jobs report. I mean, the jobs report was really, really, you know, the private payroll at 374, you know, 1,000 in, in August compared to 600,000 estimate. I, I see this as a problem. I don't see a lot of people going back to work at the same rate. There's a lot of these people are still getting benefits. Uh, and why is that important, Dave? I, to everybody out there, this is extremely important if you're an investor because the, they have moved the goalpost every fucking time, right? So they said, we don't want to see 2% inflation and we have 5% inflation on the CPI, right? The gauge meant to never ever show inflation. Wait, because that's going to be a lot higher because that tracks rental incomes and that's going to come in later on because rental incomes, uh, not rental incomes, uh, just rent in general. And rent cost, gonna, yeah. Yeah, rent's going to surge. So we're going to see that even go crazier. So then they're like, well, we want to see the unemployment rate go back down. Now they moved it again. We want to see the unemployment rate go down to, to pre-COVID levels, which is 3.9, 3.8. And what are we at? 5.2. You're not going to get down to those levels. They're not going to see those levels. So when we see reports like this, let's see what it translates into the job report, which is you know the first week every Friday. So we're going to see that number come out on Friday. I expect that number to actually go up it's from 5. I think it's 5.2, but it's, gonna, it's probably going to go a little bit higher based on these numbers. And when I see this, it tells us that the Fed, if that's your goal and saying before we really, you know, start raising rates and stop buying $120 billion in bonds every single freaking month and inflating this economy like crazy, we want to see unemployment go down. Unemployment's not going to hit those levels for a very long time. It's a different market now. A lot of people are not going to work. They got the, it, it's like they got a taste of being at home, what they could do. Uh, it, it, it's just they don't want to go back in the workplace. A lot of these people are getting paid. Still, you're seeing signs everywhere, not just where I live, guys. You're seeing them. People are still incredibly short-staffed. You can get a job any place, and they're not able to do it. And it's resulting in a lot of poor customer service in restaurants and and bars and stuff like that. They just can't get employees. I just, If that's really the Fed's goal, expect rates to stay low, which is going to continue to provide a floor. Or instead of a floor, it's just, it's just buy the dip mentality going forward, at least until we see some kind of tapering, which which I don't. So that's how that whole entire thing translates. I think it's very important that we talked about that. 